what faith is defined by scripture. So let me tell you what faith is. If you really examine what the Bible says about faith and belief, if you pay careful attention, you're going to know faith is faithfulness. Even when John describes believing in Christ, this is something that was noted by even James White years ago. All those who read the Greek will notice that when John, the apostle, describes true belief, he uses the present active <clears throat> tense, meaning it's not simply believed. It's believing. It's a present active participle. It's an ongoing active believing in Christ. That's the term that John employs by inspiration of the Holy Spirit to describe true believers. Who's a true believer? The one who's believing. Notice it's ongoing. It's an active, dynamic, ongoing belief. It is believing, continually believing. Well, for John, believing in Christ is trusting in Christ. It's taking Jesus at his word and doing what he says. In other words, the proper definition of faith, according to Scripture, it is a faith that's faithful to Christ, trusting in Christ and obeying him. There is no such thing as faith that isn't faithfulness to do what Christ says. Go to James 2, 18 to 19 to, to illustrate my point. James 2, 18 to 19? Yep. Okay. But some will, sorry, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Notice, they believe, but they still go to hell. Why? Because the type of faith that the inspired authors of Scripture have in mind is not simply mental assent. Yes, I acknowledge and I believe and I know God exists. I acknowledge and I believe and I know Jesus is Lord. Because the demons know that. They're still going to hell. Faith, as defined by Scripture, is not simply acknowledging Jesus is Lord, but being faithful to him. So faith is faithfulness. Well, you can't be faithful if you're not obeying him. Mm. So when you define faith that way, Every Trinitarian tradition can affirm sola fide, which is why in the church fathers, you'll find them using terms such as justified by faith alone, apart from works, because they understood what faith is. Faith is being faithful, but you can't be faithful if you're not obeying Christ. That's being faithless. Yes. So it's a false dichotomy. That's why in James 2.26, notice that a true living faith is a faith that obeys and does good works because the faith that doesn't obey and does good, good works is dead. It's not faith. James 2 26, read it. Um, for as the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead. Also. See, you caught it. Can you yes. be a living rational human being? If your spirit leaves your body? No. So then how can you have faith? If there is no working because faith is being faithful and faithfulness is obeying you cannot separate works as being definitional to what faith is you cannot separate works as being definitional to what faith is you cannot separate works as being definitional to what faith is the word of God says in James chapter 2, starting off in verse 14, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? This passage is pertaining to the profitability of one's faith, not the validity of one's faith. In other words, a dead faith unaccompanied by works is not somehow invalid or non-existent, 
but rather it is unprofitable to others. Though faith without works saves the individual from the penalty of sin, faith without works cannot profit a brother or sister who is naked and destitute of daily food. Meaning, merely professing be ye warmed and filled does them no good without providing those things which are needful to the body. Titus chapter 3 verse 8 says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and what? Profitable unto who? Men. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, Let your light so shine before who? Men, that they may see your what? Good works, and consequently glorify your Father which is in heaven. Thus, James is admonishing his fellow believers to be doers of the word, and not hearers only, both for the benefit of others and personal blessing. Look at James chapter 1 verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, watch this, this man shall be what? Blessed in his deed. Another mistake often made by those seeking to harmonize James chapter 2 with salvation through faith alone is that they fail to rightly divide between justification before men, which is what James is describing, and justification before God, which is what Paul speaks of in Romans chapter 4. Notice the stark contrast between the two. James chapter 2 verse 21 says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered up Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect or complete? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, don't miss this, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Romans chapter 4 verse 1 says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For... If Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. As you can see, James chapter 2 is completely consistent with justification by faith alone when we take context into consideration and rightly divide the word of truth. As always, failure to do so results in confusion, contradiction, and corruption.